How's it going everyone? My name is Adrungo and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are doing another tier list as part of this album discussion series. Yes, you heard me correct. I think I'm going to rename it the album discussion rather than its previous title. Because by God I was just... It was a mouthful to say. I thought I was being clever, but it didn't really work. So the series will be retitled... The album discussion. The premise is the same, we will have a tier list where we will be focusing on a specific band and we'll talk about their albums throughout their career and I will essentially rate them. Today's band to highlight is Black Veil Brides. Black Veil Brides of course have got a few albums under their belt now and I thought it would be another great opportunity as they have a few albums like Avenged Sevenfold to discuss each album and rate it where I think it should sit. Now, as I always say in these videos, in this series, these are my opinions and obviously yours may differ. I would love to hear people's comments in the section below if they agree with some of the stuff I said or if they would rate an album differently. So, of course, the albums I've got are We Stitch These Wounds, Set the World on Fire, Wretch and Divine, the subtitled album, Veil. I have included the re-release of We Stitch These Wounds, which is Re Stitch These Wounds, purely because they did re-record it and added a few new elements to it. It does have a different kind of extra sound to it. I didn't include the resurrected version of Awaken the Fallen in the event Sunfold because there was no re-recording. It was just the original album and it was just extra content that was thrown on. And of course I have their newest album, The Phantom Tomorrow. So we're gonna start with their first album which was released way back in 2010, which is 12 years ago now. God, We Stitched His Wounds was an album that came out pretty much as there was kind of a resurgence in sort of rock and metal, I think. The metalcore scene was really breaking out with bands such as Ask Alexandria leading the way. And then obviously this band comes onto the scene and to be honest, split a lot of people's opinions a lot of people really you know got on board with what they were trying to do there was a lot of theatrics to them obviously with the makeup very especially in the early album the first one there was a very dark and sort of gothic tone to it and obviously some people didn't like it because of those same reasons obviously songs to note from this this is probably where some of their well-known songs obviously come from but they don't typically play a lot of them live anymore Apart from Perfect Weapon and Knives and Pen. To be honest, I do like a lot of the songs. If anything, I do like the entire album. Yeah, this album got criticised, if I believe, from critics saying that like Andy sang very monotone, kind of. And I can understand where they're coming from. Another criticism I have heard is they think that there's people sometimes feel the drums sound a bit sort of robotic. Obviously, they, had, they didn't have CC in this album. They had... It wasn't her name Sandra something I can't, I can't think I think her name was Sandra she's in the music video for Knives and Pens and Perfect Weapon I think the drumming's fine I don't think there's a, any really any issue to the drumming but it has it is a criticism I have heard people say apart from that I think it's a, I do think it's a solid album uh, it's obviously the first Black Veil Brides album and it's cemented sort of how they wanted to go at the time and with the look very 80s style look which they definitely went even more so in into the next album with that being said i think i'm probably gonna put we stitched his wounds the first album i'm probably gonna put it as a b tier uh, it is a good album i do think there is in my opinion i do think there are some better albums it's a middle of the i think it's a middle of the ground sort of album uh the, the first album that they released a lot of strong songs there were a couple of criticisms and i do think the quality of the recording is a little bit dated now but there aren't that's only very very minor sort of like criticisms to throw at it it's still a very strong album so the next album we'll come on to is set the world on fire this is probably the album a lot of people discovered black Veil brides for me anyway it was the first album i uh, heard they had a lot they had quite a few singles off this album, I believe. You had Fallen Angels, Rebel Love Song, The Legacy. Oh, was that it? It was only three. I thought that, I honestly thought there was at least four or maybe five. I thought there was a few more singles, but 
yeah, Rebel Love Song, Legacy, Fallen Angels, a lot of more popular songs in their, in their catalogue would, would came from this album. The, the album opening with the song New Religion, uh, I think it's a really, really strong opener, especially uh, I think it's really cool that when at the end of the song, Andy goes on that little rant. A song that I do think is kind of underrated, to be honest, is Ritual. I really, really enjoy that song. It is what it is. Uh, Saviour, very, very good song. Kind of like the more ballad song on the album, like Mortician's Daughter from the previous album. But yeah, uh, obviously theatrical wise, they really went for the the makeup and the kit, like the kiss kind of look, the 80s style, which a lot of people liked and a lot of people didn't like. It's how you wanted to sit on the camp for that. But uh, again, I thought it was a very, very strong album. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm actually going to put that in an A tier. Uh, I do think it's slightly better than the first album. I think the songwriting kind of improved. And these vocals that did improve. Uh, the songs are a bit more catchy on this album. And definitely singable. Like um, for fans. Just in my opinion. And they're more memorable. Maybe it's because they tend to play them live a lot more. Than the first album. But uh, it, it's still... Still a strong album in my opinion. So now we'll come on to the third album, which is Wretched and Divine. And Wretched and Divine is a beast in itself. It's it's a concept album. So it was the first time they had attempted a concept album, and there's a lot to it. There's nine, there's technically 19 tracks. That's long for an album. But a, a lot of them are very, very short because it's all part of the story. They're not all songs. There's a lot of 30 second tracks that just add to the story. And I think, I see what they were going for. A criticism I think is, a lot of people think that the album is too long. There's a lot of story they could possibly have just taken out of it and not had to really like, make it as long as they did but it was their first attempt and to be honest i i think the album's fine it's actually probably my favorite <laughs> i'm gonna say i do like the songs the try if you're ever just trying to listen to the album then then yeah going through like all the 30 second stuff can be a bit tedious um but the songs itself are great and obviously uh, I have two versions of this. I don't know if I can find them. So I actually have two versions of the songs. The only album I have two of. Um, and that's purely because I bought this version. This is the deluxe version, which has a DVD, which uh, is the making, of the making of the album. However, I thought this was going to be the uh, version that they made the film to, because they did say they were making uh, like a little film and I thought that's what that was the deluxe edition but it wasn't it turns out it was this version the ultimate edition um, which I think the cover to this is actually a lot nicer because it's like darker it's like a more nighttime uh, look to the cover uh, you also get some bonus tracks in this you get revelations victory call and let you down which makes the album even goddamn longer now an extra 10 minutes to the album to be honest, the songs are quite good, uh, but also you get the DVD, Legion, Legion of the Black. Uh, if you've watched it, I think it's cool. Um, I think it's just a nice little nod to the story. Obviously, it's the entire album, but in a more visual version, so I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, songs that I personally would pick out from this is I Am Bulletproof, Resurrect the Sun, Shadows Die... Uh, and in the end, the single. Uh, it's weird, actually, because I think in the end is technically the only single they ever released in this album. It was the only music video, but then they did do the film. I think, uh, like I said, I I'm going to place Wretched and the Vine as an S tier. You a lot of people might disagree because of all the interlude type stuff, but I think it's a solid album. Um, I really enjoy it. I've I recently listened to it again. And I really forgot how good I find the songs on this album. Right, so moving on to the next album, which I didn't realise, I completely forgot. It came out only a year after Wretched and Divine. I can't believe that. I thought it was at least two years. Um, so we're, we're going to 2014 now. 
where they released their fourth album, which was self-titled, um, Black Vow Brides. This album was different to Regin and Divine. They went more with a like a big rock vibe. Um, I think it was also uh, very influenced by the producer that they went with. I think he's a producer that is very known for like Motley Crue sounding songs or and stuff like that. Very, very influenced by that style of music and obviously different to Wretched and Divine. I think writing a massive concept record probably took a lot out of them and this one just went back to your, you know, your typical just songs on an album. This album... There are some songs that were good. They did release three singles, which was Heart of Fire, Faithless, and Goodbye Agony. Uh, I think Heart of Fire is probably my favorite. I know this album, well, not the album, but I know the, the song Heart of Fire especially. When I when it got released, I did see a bit of criticism for it. I said it was very simple, it was, it was meh. There wasn't too much to it coming off of what they just released. I thought it was all right. It was a simple song, but it, it was a catchy song. The thing I liked about Goodbye Agony is I didn't really enjoy the song itself that much, but the music video was really cool because it had loads of like nods to previous albums and also um, music videos in particular. Uh, the biggest one being at the end was, if, if I'm correct, at the end he opens the coffin and it's his Andy Six look from the music video Coffin, which was on the Rebels EP, which I haven't included because I think Coffin was the only sing, uh, new singular song on it. I think the others were covers. Um, everyone kind of thought that his Andy Six persona was going to come back because, like, you know, waking up in the coffin, if I'm correct, or was it? It was something like that. I, I'm, I'm really trying to remember but it was something like that it was a very very good music video there was a lot of nods there was like the 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 demon shadow things from wretched and the vine were in there the book i think from uh, knives and pens was in there. there there was a lot of stuff to to, to really put into that in, into that music video to to look and if you it was it was interesting as a as a bad for bride fan just to watch the music video and just try and like pause it at moments like to find oh look there's there's this, this certain thing that's from this music video and there's that from this it was really really good it was like an east easter egg filled music video honestly i'm gonna say apart from that there's not really much on this album that i kind of liked drag me to the grave was okay world of sacrifice is an okay track but yeah there's not really there's not really all too much i will admit in this album that i i kind of enjoyed so i i'm gonna place this album as a c tier people may disagree there's another album in my opinion that's 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 gonna come a bit worse off but uh, c tier for the self-titled album there were some okay songs I, it definitely didn't live up to what i thought I hoped it would, especially tailing off Wretched and Divine. But I know that they're, they're two different demons in themselves. Like this, this album is just a normal album, whereas Wretched and Divine was a concept album. So I know that there are obviously massive differences. But uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it just didn't live up to what I thought it was going to be. But to be honest, it came out a year after that. I think it was possibly too soon to do another album. I maybe should have given it another year and released in 2015. But what's done is done. I'm not criticizing the band whatsoever. It's still, it is still a decent album. Right, so now we come on to Veil. Now, Veil is the fifth album. And my God, what do I say about this? Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> it's the album I don't like. Just look at that tracking list. There's not a lot of songs that really stand out to me. Uh, what, were the, what were the singles from this? Uh, the Outsider, My Vow, The Last One. And wake up. I I don't really think any of the songs apart from one were that good. The only song from this album that I really really enjoyed was Wake Up. I thought Wake Up was a good song. However, the rest of it I just didn't feel it. I, I just re I remember sitting in my room at the time. The album had just dropped. I listened to the album and I just remember being bored. 
personally i just remember being bored listening to it i was kind of like okay so this is this song just kind of waiting for the next song to start just to see if that one was gonna like be, be better and like none of the songs were, were were just up to par in my opinion for what i, I expected um wake up was definitely the highlight of the album in my opinion but unfortunately that one song doesn't save it and this is the d tier album for me so i'm i'm sorry to anyone who enjoyed this album but in my opinion it is the d tier album it's a shame because I actually think the artwork is really, really cool. It's pro I think it's probably the be one of the best artworks they've had for an album. But uh, yeah, it's it's f for personally for me, it's like the forgotten album. It's just nothing on it that I really enjoyed. Like I said, it's just Wake Up uh, as a single. The music video to that was 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 decent, uh, and I thought it was going to be a bit of, I, I was hoping it would be an improvement over the self-titled album but it unfortunately it just wasn't right so now we'll come to re-stitch these wounds and i have like i said i've included this song because there were some changes to it there was re-recorded and there were some slight changes um mainly it, the, the changes were improvements to the quality they added some sounds um obviously they had a lot much bigger budget this time than they did when they first released the original so i think uh, andy said in an interview that it just allowed them to pull off what they wanted the original album to sound like and there are some improvements i think carolyn's got um some slight improvements to the feel of the album it's one of the it's again it's one of the best songs on the album obviously andy's voice is a lot more varied in this he, he does push his voice and doesn't sound as monotone probably one of the biggest changes is mortician's daughter so andy doesn't sing in that because i think he said that the song was about his ex and obviously now he's he's married he didn't think it was right to basically sing a song about an ex-girlfriend um, but what they did instead was uh, jinx plays violin or whatever it is in place of the vocals and it does become a very very beautiful sounding instrumental song majority like i said the majority of the other songs are obviously the same it's just improvements to the quality and some sort of changes obviously cc is now on the drums and i think he does throw a lot of his drumming technique and influence onto onto this album um for these small reasons and from what i've discussed i i'm gonna put restitches wounds as an s tier i think it's a very very big improvement over the original album last album the phantom tomorrow now the phantom tomorrow what do i say um some good songs uh i've i've, rea I've done some reaction videos to, this, to, to the songs on this this is the first album in this album discussion series we're actually speaking about an album i've done reaction videos to because the avenge sevenfold i haven't because all the albums came out before i started the channel um obviously scarlet cross scarlet cross was according to my channel the first reaction video i ever did and it technically isn't uh, it was a different song which got blocked and uh, like fully blocked like no one could see it so i had to delete it there was like because it was never going to get unblocked so scarlet cross technically is the first reaction video that you'll see on my channel uh it was the first video as well that did really well i got to about 400 views or something i was insane now i've got like the odd video has got like 15,000 views it just blows my mind um but yeah i reacted to scarlet cross i reacted to born again most that's one of the recent ones i've done torch fields of bone and crimson sky so like a good portion of this album i i am um, have done reactions to um the other songs are pretty good i think the wicked one is probably a good one for me to note out of the ones that haven't been released as singles um the others are, are kind of okay but um i think this is is this meant to also be a concept album i'm not too sure it does tell a story so i'm just trying to have a quick read it might be a concept album as well but they might have they've definitely gone in favor of a more traditional probably concept album where it's just through the songs there are two like interlude tracks which is the phantom tomorrow which is the first song and spectrus is that how you pronounce it 
uh, which is like an interlude, which is like track five. The rest are, are legit songs, not like Wretch and the Divine, where there's like half the album um, is 30 second little things. Um, so I guess maybe they, they, they didn't want try and go OTT like they did last time. Uh, maybe they learn from it. I personally, like I said, I don't see a problem because I think it's one of my favourite albums. But where do I put The Phantom Tomorrow? In my opinion, I think The Phantom Tomorrow is... It is a bit of a decent album. There are some strong songs. I do think it's better than Veil. Vale, but do I think it's on par with... I see, I, it's definitely not an S tier album. And I don't think it's an A tier album. So it's either a B or a C tier album for me. And do I think... I'm I'm going to put it in a C. I think that's where I'm going to put it. Um, it's got some good tracks. But I do love the original album. Obviously, I've put it in a B tier because I think the re-release was a lot better. A lot of people might think this is absolute bullshit and call me out saying, how the hell can you put a re-release higher than the original? Say you love the original and then, you know, it's, look, hey, it's what I, it's what I decided to do. So let's just quickly go over it. So D tier is Veil. I, I honestly, I think it's their poorest album. Uh, C tier is the self-titled and Phantom Tomorrow. I maybe could have bumped Phantom Tomorrow up to a B tier, but I think the self-titled and Phantom Tomorrow equally have like the same amount of songs on it that I kind of like to dislike. Um, maybe the Phantom Tomorrow has like one or two more, especially because I've done reaction videos to it. I think Crimson Skies is probably my is my favourite um, track uh, from the album. Very closely followed by uh, Scarlet Cross. Um, B tier, I've gone with uh, We Stitch These Wounds. It's 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 an iconic album. It's their first one. Uh, a lot of the hardcore old school Black Veil Brides fans obviously love that album. A tier is We Set the World on Fire. Again, iconic album. Probably the most well known album. Uh, but S tier is Wretched and Divine. And re stitch these wounds, uh, the, the re release, obviously. Uh, both albums, I think, are, are great. Like I said, I love the first album, but the re release, but the improved quality and the little the slight changes they've done to it, you know, really, really pumps that. It's what I would love the, the original album to have been, which is what they aimed for, so hence why I put it in the S tier. And Wretched and Divine, because I, I do think the story's great to it. All the extra stuff you can buy, like the DVD and the, the, the making of the album, is just a bonus. I think the album's great, the story's great, and uh, yeah, it was just it released at that time, that right time in my life, um, where I was really, really into my music as a teenager, you know, like a young teenager, like 14, 15, and uh, I just loved it <laughs> as, a, as, a, as an album. So it's got that nostalgia pretty much for me. Um, so there we go. Do you agree with the list? Do you not agree? I'd love to see what people think. Maybe there's some changes looking at the list. Maybe I could have changed some stuff around. But I, I'm quite happy with my choice. So uh, I'd love to see what people think. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. As I've enjoyed it rating these albums <laughs> i hope you agree i'd love to hear your comments below please like comment and subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye